Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents Good News Today, featuring an inspiring gospel teaching by Father Jim Willig. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat. Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to begin by asking the question to all of you. If you could ask Jesus for one special favor or one special blessing, what would you ask of him today? One special blessing. What would it be? Or I think of the man who, who asked his priest, Father, would you please pray for one special intention I have? He said, my brother who's widowed some years ago and without any children is sick and suffering and we haven't been on speaking terms for some time. Pray that we could be reconciled. The priest was moved to hear this and said, I'm so glad that you would want to ask for something so spiritual and not material or even personal, but that you would ask for the love of your brother, I will indeed pray. And the guy, feeling a little shy, said, well, that's okay, to be honest with you, he's on his deathbed and he's worth about six million dollars. <laughs> what is your intention you would ask of the Lord? This gospel suggests what the apostles were asking. Think about it. The one favor they're asking today is, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. I'm impressed <laughs> that they did not ask for health or wealth. They did not ask for fame or fortune or anything worldly at all. Presumably, the apostles were learning by now that faith is absolutely the greatest treasure we have in this life because it opens up for us eternal life. And asking Jesus for faith is, I think, like asking your mother for a hug. The person you're asking is even more eager to give it than you could be to receive it. This is why Jesus came, to give us faith. Now, one wonders what the disciples or apostles expected Jesus to do. I mean, if you ask for faith, what do you expect the Lord to do? I wonder if they were expecting, like sometimes I expect or hope, that Jesus would pour faith into me like we pour gas into our car. You know, just pour it on, Lord. And yet, his answer doesn't suggest anything like that at all. Do you recall what he said? Jesus answered, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this sycamore, Be uprooted, and transplanted into the sea, and it would obey you. By those words, I'm thinking that Jesus is using his comparison of mustard seed to show how powerful faith can be. Even a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed of all in the Palestinian area, it can be cultivated and it can grow into the largest shrub to allow the birds to build their nest. The key, of course, is that it needs to be cultivated. 
It needs to be planted. It needs to be put into use. Maybe Jesus is saying, in effect, don't worry about how much faith you have. Faith is so powerful that even if you have just a little faith, you can solve the biggest problems and surpass the most colossal obstacles. Like uprooting a sycamore, the largest of trees. Like moving a mountain, as is mentioned in Matthew or Mark's Gospel. Think about it. What is faith able to help you achieve in your life? If you can believe it, God can achieve it. I'd like to use another image that's been very helpful to me, trying to understand faith and the power of faith in our life. I would suggest that God's power can be compared to electrical power. Electrical power can light this entire undercroft room and the entire cathedral. It can heat and cool an entire building. Electrical power can operate almost any machinery or appliance. The key, though, is you must plug into the electrical power in order to gain the access to it. Similarly with faith. Faith is what plugs us into God's power and His presence. And with the access to His power, if we tap into it, plug into it, it can enlighten our mind, it can fire our hearts, it can strengthen our whole being, it can heal our hurts, it can empower us to do the very work of God, which is to work miracles. But you will notice in the gospel, it's replete with examples that Jesus required faith in order to work miracles. They had to plug into his power. And so if we can only believe, even in this moment, that Jesus is here, and even more, to trust, for that is what essentially faith means in the gospel, to actively trust in God's presence and power that will be activated in our life right here and right now. Though we can't see, or I certainly can't understand, electricity, we can feel its effect. And so it is with faith. If we really believe, on, I just had a conversation with a man the other day, and it often happens in my office this way. He came pouring out his problems, and I said to him, can you believe that right now God has brought you to this point? And that right here now God is wanting to help you. And in fact, through our conversation, God is even speaking to you. And he said, yes, I believe. From that moment, it was like the Lord took over and his problems converted into the most wonderful thing that in a turn of events of his life. I see it happening all the time. I'm sure you do too. Faith makes miracles happen. If you will, faith is our input that allows God's output to work powerfully in our life. Now, the second half of the gospel brings this to mind. It relates to us what the gift of faith is about. Faith always leads to action. And Jesus used the example of a servant. He says, would someone be grateful to a servant who is only carrying out his orders? His orders, of course, would be analogous to God who directs our lives. And Jesus, in effect, then says, Likewise, when you have done all you have been commanded to do, say, we are useless, or I wish to retranslate that word, we are humble servants. We have done nothing more than our duty. Faith reminds us that our life is a humble service. It is a duty and privilege to do what God asks us to do. Let me give an example that comes immediately to my mind. And I say this with some embarrassment, actually. Last year, I was preaching a parish mission, which I do once a month, you might know. And after the mission, I felt a little discouraged and disappointed because the whole week long, the pastor never said a single word of thanks to me. And 
I was surprised because I've obviously the parish was expressing their gratitude. It, I was feeling slighted by his, what I thought was his oversight. And when I finally finished and left, he never said a word goodbye, never, never a word of thanks. And so I, I let God know what I felt about that. <laughs> and as I did so, I heard the words of this gospel come to mind. We are useless, humble servants. We have done no more than our duty. And then came the words, I had never myself stopped to thank God for the privilege he gave me to be able to do his work. I never even thought of it. I've tried to correct that since then, and it has changed me in terms of this. No longer is it so important, although I always appreciate it, when someone says thanks, because I see the much more important matter at hand to do his work in the privilege that I'm the one. <laughs> we are the ones that need to say thanks. Does this make sense? It turns it all around. This is what faith does. It turns things all around. It gives us perfect 2020 vision, a vision of eternity, a vision of what matters most, a vision of, uh, with the eyes of God and how different that is from our normal human perspective. I would like to share with you now another person's story who I wish could have been with us today. I spoke to her last night and all through this last week, in fact, and she wished she could have been here with us to tell her own story, but she was unable to do. And so with her permission and with a lot of her information, I share with you the story of Lori that is a powerful testimony of what faith can accomplish against the largest obstacles and troubles in life. To give you first a little background, Laurie was 25 years old and newly wed. She was a very healthy and happy professional young woman who worked at the zoo. She was in charge of the bear in walruses. And she was at her personal and professional peak in life, in her career, when on March 28, 1990, you might recall an incident that changed her life forever. As she was working at the zoo, Lori was observing an 800-pound male polar bear who was confined to an underground cage. She was concerned about his health and wanting to check his condition. She tried to lure him out of his dark corner by tossing him a grape. At that, the polar bear grabbed her finger with his teeth, and then chewed his way up her arm. Fortunately, there was another zookeeper and friend who heard her scream and began to beat the polar bear off, but not until he had eaten most of her right arm up to her elbow. Lori recalls, and I quote her now, the bear held on to my fingertips for a long time. Once his teeth moved up my hand, then my wrist, I was sure I would die because I knew people died when they slashed their wrist. I began to pray to God and screamed in pain. I shook from a place that I never felt before. I had too much to live for. I thought of my family, my new husband, and my not wanting to leave anybody in this ghastly way. Suddenly, I was accepting the fact that I no longer had an arm, that there was nothing compared to the darkness I was fighting in that moment. But I could not let the darkness overcome me. I did not want my life to end because I realized I had not had the opportunity to live the way I wanted to live. You hear the powerful faith there. As Lori was lying bleeding at that particular place in the zoo, at the cage of the polar bear, one of her friends and fellow zookeeper, Lee Ann, came over to her. And Lori, the first thing she asked was, please pray for me. And so Lee Ann, who was not a Catholic, 
yelled around to those uh, at the zoo, get a Catholic, get a Catholic. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Now, Lori, she laughed at this later, but she grabbed hold of Leanne and says, I don't need a Catholic, I need anybody to pray. And so finally, there was a young man. He came running over and began to pray the Our Father. Lori said, that prayer saved her. She said, I prayed with him. When everything else was away, prayer was all I had to hold on to. And you just see the Lord holding on to her. The power of prayer. You remember what I said? The input of faith that brings the output of God's grace. Lori, further in the interview, uh, recounted the time she moved back with her parents for two weeks after the first surgery. She said, and again I quote, During those weeks, I slept only an hour at night because I kept tossing and turning, reconstructing each step on March 28th, wondering if there was any way I could have done things differently. She said she was haunted by nightmares lying in bed, crying, but fearing she might awake her parents. And then she said, and again I quote, One night, my mom came into my room, lay down beside me, and began praying the rosary with me. Her presence and her prayer were so soothing that I relearned how to pray the rosary. And many nights after that, I fell asleep, taking comfort from that powerful, uncomplicated prayer. Wow. Isn't that touching? Lori later recalled, too, that lying in the hospital after the accident, she was almost numb, thinking, this can't be my life. It must be a horror movie. And she said, I realize now that I didn't have the strength to recover on my own. It must come from the power of the prayer of others. There it is, my friends. What is faith but to say and to know deep in our hearts that I cannot do what I need to do, but God can. And so I will ask him and I will let him. That's faith. That's the conviction we live by. And that's what Lori is learning and sharing with us now. She went on to talk about some of those struggles. You could imagine all that she had to go through. The, the people initially staring at her in the comments that were insensitive. People saying, oh, this shouldn't happen to such an attractive girl. And they never knew how these, these comments really hurt her. Because she wasn't feeling, of course, very attractive anymore. And she said she credited her husband to giving the best therapy that nurtured her own self-esteem. As she kept a journal through this time, she began to refer to her husband as her right hand. The hand she lost, now she found in him. Isn't that again what faith teaches us? How God provides for us. Lori survived a year of rehabilitation and four surgeries that she said taught her so many lessons about what is most valuable in life. Again, I quote, So many of our concerns about our bodies are really peripheral. She says, I guess I have been blessed to be able to realize now at the age of 25 that the physical is only as important as you let it be, and that someday it'll all be gone. And then what's left is the spiritual person that you are. Again, the perspective of faith that teaches us what really matters. Her refusal to take life too seriously was evident in her great sense of humor even from the few hours after the accident. She recalls when she was quickly taken in the life squad to the hospital that the surgeon began by asking her the question, are you allergic to anything? And Lori responded, 
polar bears. I'm allergic to polar bears. And months later, she recalled a friend of hers who dropped off her daughter and spent some time with her and later came to pick her up. And her friend said to Lori, not thinking, well, knowing her daughter is so talkative, she said, I hope my daughter didn't talk your arm off. And Lori held up her prosthesis and said, well, that wouldn't be too hard, would it? It was so wonderful talking to Lori over the phone and hearing from her what this tragedy had taught her and how she has been brought to the deepest faith through it all and all the little struggles that she faced day by day, week after week, year after year, as I said, this happened back in 1990, not least of which was a time when she learned that she was pregnant and she wondered out loud, with her husband, how am I ever going to do this? The diapers, the lifting, the in and out of car seats. And she prayed for strength and patience and prayed for the baby who would have to deal with a lot later too. She then, after much thought, decided to name her baby Luke because of her fondness for this gospel that we are studying the Gospel of Luke that says, put your faith in God. And that is all. She also gave her son the middle name Francis, whose feast day we celebrate today. And she kiddingly said, maybe Luke Francis will go out and have, like Francis, a great love for the animals and be able to tame the wolves so that this family may have a second chance with them. It was so inspirational and delightful to speak to Lori, but what stays with me the most is that it is only faith that can get us through these difficult times. And with faith, you can actually turn a tragedy into a real opportunity of God to bless you in a greater way. And Lori now is able to let God use her as she's teaching religion classes. And she says it's so interesting to talk to the high school students who keep looking at her arm and thinking, oh, you poor little girl. And she says, no, no, it's through all of this that she's come to know the Lord in a greater and more powerful way. That is what faith is all about. And today, as we look at that ourselves, we might want to consider the trial that we all go through. What is the challenge that's put before us? And how is God our right hand that is offered to us to help us? That faith allows us to connect with him. Amen. Heart to Heart welcomes you back next week for another inspiring edition of Good News Today. If you are interested in other books, CDs, DVDs, or digital downloads by Father Jim or Father Michael, you can call toll-free 1-877-208-4875 or visit our website www.heartoheart.org. There, you can also sign up to receive a weekly reminder to listen to these same programs online. And please, consider a donation of any size to help support Heart to Heart's radio and internet ministry. That's www.heartoheart.org or call 1-877-208-4875. Thank you for listening, and may God bless your heart and the hearts of all of your loved ones. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.